Hello, welcome to my channel. <clears throat> Another one in the series about reticulum mesh chat. And I'm using two instances of um, Liam Cottle's mesh chat <clears throat> program running on two different machines. Um, and also a spectrum display of signals that are being sent on the frequency so you can see them communicating with each other. Um, if you can see the, the mouse pointer moving in the top left hand corner of the screen, sorry it's so small, but that's how it is. Um, this is a uh, Ubuntu machine called T488. <clears throat> this is the one I use for chatting on Reticulum on quite often in the Nomad network. And the window below that, which I can't move this mouse to, is um, a Windows computer, <clears throat> which is um, running a Reticulum mesh chat as well. And that's called Pavi because it's a pavilion from HP computer. So I know which one I'm looking at. And then to the right of that, over that way, is the um, spectrum display with waterfall from the SDRPP program, SDR++, that's receiving, as you can see, it's centered on 867.5 MHz, which is the uh, frequency recommended to use in the UK. It seems to be used for RFID. <clears throat> when you look at the, um, the, uh, the available spectrum of what it's used for, it's used for RFID tags, I think, so the, the beeper that beeps when you take something out of a shop <clears throat> where they haven't removed the tag, um, it seems to be shared with that system as far as I know, which doesn't matter because those are a long way away and uh, they're not really sending a lot of data <laughs> and I've not heard them here. Um, the antenna, actually there's no antenna plugged into the receiver at the moment, so what you're seeing is just the, the signals breaking into the metal box of the SDR receiver because these signals are quite strong already, they're 100 milliwatt transmitters, so um, it's enough already to be able to see what's going on and not see any of the surrounding signals coming from outside without an antenna. I might plug one in later, <clears throat> see what there is, um, and you'll see little bursts of signals in all sorts of places. Anyway, what I want to just do is to demonstrate that if I um, tell this the top left-hand window to announce itself, it's currently set to announce every three hours. <clears throat> if I uh, click the Announce button, it will do an announce, and you'll see the signal go out, and the window below, <clears throat> the lower left-hand corner, that machine doesn't have a radio node attached to it. So it's being relayed from another machine in my network which does have a radio node. So I've actually got three machines running in this demonstration. <clears throat> and the, that means there'll be two hops between the top left window and the bottom left window because of the radio link to um, an intermediary machine that's acting as a bridge. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to uh, click on Announce now to make this one announce itself. There's the announce packet. <clears throat> you see it's fairly orange and very long. I wonder why that's so long. Um, it's fairly orange means it's a strong signal. When something responds to it, the other radio node I have here in this test is a weaker signal, so it'll be a bit more yellow. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So that's uh, an announce packet that's been sent. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is try sending a message. And I'm going to say hello, typing with my left hand. So that's hello being sent. And actually, the response from the other end is the same color. That's a shame. I wanted to make it a different color. Um, but the color is dependent on the signal strength. What I could do is just uh, shield the antenna a bit and do this again. So I'm going to say hello number two, hello two, and try again. OK, now you can see it better that the, the red packets are the strong ones <clears throat> which are sending the hello to message and then the yellow packet is the other radio node that's acknowledging receipt of it. So um, you can see that the signal has been sent and hopefully, yes it has, in the bottom left hand corner you can see those words hello and hello to. Occasionally I miss messages on uh, those kinds of um, windows because this program doesn't always scroll up as new messages come in. So sometimes I think, where are my messages? I can't see the new ones I just sent because it's in this state and this hadn't auto-scrolled. So the messages are below here. So you have to sometimes manually scroll this to read the new, newest messages. It's happened to me a couple of times. I thought something wasn't working. It's just because the, the window didn't scroll. And it's not a complaint. It's just a feature and it's worth knowing about. Um, I could send something the other way while I'm here. This is actually running in a web browser because the uh, reticulum mesh chat program itself has a, a, 
user interface that looks like this, but it actually has its own web server, puts out the same screen on port 9337. So if you have a web browser, this is Firefox, connected to the local machine IP address, which is that, or it's local host, you can often type in here, and then colon 9337, then it will see the output from the mess chat program. And um, so I'm just going to type something in here, like 1234, and press enter. And hopefully that will cause a packet to be sent. So there's the packet just being sent, you can see it. And hopefully it will have arrived at the other end. <coughs> Again, I have to scroll there. Well, there's an example of where I had to scroll this because it was off the bottom and you didn't see it, even though a new message arrived. You can turn on notifications with a lot of these programs so that a message pops up on the window of the computer to, to tell you a message has been received. And also, um, when using NomadNet, which I haven't really shown you much of yet, um, that makes a beep, a short beep. So um, I turn up the volume on that machine and then I hear a beep when someone sent me a message, which I can then go and look for. So I think that's enough for this short demonstration. You can see there are packets being sent backwards and forwards on the radio interface and give you some idea of the, the length of a packet in uh, time, how short the bursts are for a certain amount of text. If you start sending audio clips, I'm tempted to do it. Now let's send an audio clip just for fun. <clears throat> so I'm going to click on here. This is in the top left window on this machine. I'm going to click Add Voice and let's use a higher quality recording. The problem is you may not get the sound. I'm going to turn on desktop audio here in the hope that you might hear it. And so um, 3200 bits. So this is uh, a very quick audio recording, which I'm going to stop now. So that's been recorded. And now I'm just going to send it. You have to send a message, a text message to send the audio. So I just typed audio and I sent it. And now you'll see that the uh, the uh, the signal time slots are filling up <laughs> in the radio spectrum. And don't forget, there's a 10% limit on uh, LoRa ISM transmissions, so you shouldn't exceed 10% of the time. Um, I can't remember if that's in a one-hour period or a 24-hour period, but you could easily exceed it. Anyway, that's been sent now. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is try playing this. Um, clip that's been received, but it may not work because of the audio setup. I hadn't tried, thought of doing this before I started the recording, so just, let's just try it, see what happens. I may not even be able to hear it myself, actually. So um, let's go in here, and there's the received message. Let's click play. This is a, a very quick audio recording, which I'm going to stop now. Oh yeah, that seemed to work. Let me do it again. This is a, a very quick audio recording, which I'm going to stop now. Yeah, so that worked. Beginner's luck. So the um, the audio clip got sent. You can also send small files, um, tiny images and things, but uh, just remember that the data rate is less than two kilobits per second, so it takes some seconds to send uh, a very small amount of data. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. Um, please comment or ask questions in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.